welcome everyone to another episode of Video Analytics 101 Interviews. We are doing these once per month where we talk to industry leaders about topics around video analytics and uh, especially around technology. Last month, we talked about lip reading technology for video surveillance. This is uh, super high tech and futuristic. If you haven't seen it, check it out. While you're here on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you're not missing anything in the future. Today, I'm super happy to have Paul Brodeur with me here as we're talking about license plate recognition, how it's evolving and how it's going beyond license plate recognition. Paul is the manager of the computer vision group in our AutoView line of products, Genetech. So I'm super happy to have her here. Welcome, Paul. Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation, Florian. So. Yeah, it's uh, it, it will be a super interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, just to start us off, I. I just want to summarize uh, for those who you don't know, who don't know, AutoView is a line of product that started off as a hardware software solution around license plate recognition. Nowadays, it's much, much more where it's um, a whole system around managing data around vehicles. But we're not here to talk about products. We're really talking about technology. So, Paul, maybe can you start us off with explaining what does your group do that's internally called mm -hmm. Grip? What does Grip do? Okay, so we're specialists in computer vision, and so. We participate in this, uh, the, the new, the involvement of the cameras, the very specialized and intelligent cameras specific to reading license plates and uh, produce analytics around license plates and vehicles. So we are specialists in optics, in imaging, but also in machine learning, and we became specialists uh, of data. I think we'll talk about it uh, in this uh, in conversation, yeah. It, it's actually a very cool combination where you have we have the hardware side and as you said you have the the optics i guess it's embedded systems as well and then mm -hmm. you have the machine learning thing on um, so it's really a hardware software solutions so actually interesting that you can combine all of these different skill yeah. sets you know, um so yeah uh, we well there's lots of talk about license plate recognition sometimes you could get the feeling that well, it's uh, like it's commodity, it's everywhere, but it's actually not true because um, the level of, of accuracy and the level of quality between different systems is actually very, very large. And I think um, if you are not from this field, sometimes it's not easy to see what is even involved in really capturing a license plate and reading it and processing it. So maybe you can uh, uh, explain to us what is involved in, in reading a license plate. What steps do you have to take? Okay, so uh, yeah, it looks simple at uh, at the beginning, in, uh, but when you think about it, we have to read in so many conditions, and so there are so many type of license plates. So they have different optic uh, characteristic. Uh, they have different layouts. So there are the diff different alphabets, and you know sometimes you have fixed installation with vehicles uh, driving very slowly. In other cases, very fast. Sometimes it's on a patrol uh, vehicle where the patrol vehicle is driving, is driving, is moving, and the the other vehicles and the place you want to see they are moving uh, along too. So we have all these conditions and lighting conditions that are very different. So when you want to reach very, very high performances, you have to work in many fields. You have to work in the quality of the optics part, you know, the best sensors, controlled illuminator, and the auto exposition, and all these image processing, denoising, and all these algorithms that uh, provide the best image so that you know, in image processing, we say garbage in, garbage out. So we need the best image as possible. So we work a lot on that. We are involved in that. But after that, we have to process these images. And everything has, all this process, processing has to be done, embedded, you, you said it, 30 frames per second in a camera. Is in, so it's in the edge processing. So the, how do we do all that to be very efficient on the CPU? We have it's a constraints uh, hardware, so it's uh, it's quite a challenge to, uh, and we want to provide more and more analytics to our clients. They, they don't want any more only license plates to read. So yeah, actually, it's a good point. Um, I, I want to go there in a second and talk about other analytics. Mm -hmm. But just to summarize, um, my understanding is that you're saying okay, so it really starts off with the optics to get a, the yeah. best quality image as possible. Um, once you get it, you try to improve it by denoising it and uh, and yeah, get the best quality out of as possible. Mm -hmm. And what what happens what happens then? I guess you have you have to detect the license plates and you have to read it. How does that work? 
Okay, so uh, yeah, at first we have to, well, we have two in the, the camera units. We have two images. One that is processed really for the license plate. So it's an IR image, so we can read at day at night in different lighting conditions. And um, so when we have a, a good contrast, and we're looking for a plate, we have a detector, which is a neural network that can detect a, a license plate, and then we. We do all the rest of the segmentation and the classification to read the, the, the content on the plate. So, yeah, the plate number, but sometimes we have to provide other information like the state name, like uh, sometimes there are some logos or some geometric form that we have to read that has that uh, is related to a, a certain information. So uh, all that processing is done on the field. And then after that, we have to link that it, to find that plate in the other image, because we have two sensors, since the other sensor is a, what we call a context image, a color image with a bigger field of view. And then we process again that image, that is the vehicle related to the plate, uh, on which the plate is. And we are in, then we calculate other uh, analytics on this. So vehicle, uh, uh, the speed, the uh, direction of travel, orient vehicle orientation, vehicle type, uh, so many an analytics like that, uh, vehicle color, uh, and so, so on. So those are examples of analytics that really go beyond the plate. Yeah. Uh, so, OK, so vehicle speed, direction, I can imagine that this is very useful in certain applications. Um, to if, if you search through video, maybe you want to have events as well. Um, so maybe can you just clarify what else what else can you do and what else is um, is maybe in the pipeline, what is realistic to detect at the same time? OK, so uh, of course, uh, depending on the field of view and all these conditions, you know, if the, uh, the, the cars are far, close, how many details you can see on, on the image. So uh, we can provide with more accurate or even add some more details in the analytics. For example, we have a vehicle type, which is a uh, th that provides a hierarchy. So if you see a lot of details, you can say, okay, well, it's a passenger vehicle, but I can say that it's also a sedan and it's a two-door sedan. Mm -hmm. If I see only the back of the vehicle, smaller, then maybe I'll say just passenger vehicle or sedan. Or if I really have a very, you know, uh, fuzzy view of the of the vehicle, it's far, then maybe I'll only see passenger vehicle. So uh, yeah, the, the, the the, the, the configuration of the scene is very important. Uh, and we have to, tr all these vehicles, we have to track them. We have to make sure that uh, we, uh, you know, we find the, uh, the, the, the plate with the proper vehicle with, and we provide the best image of the track. And, uh, uh, and with all that, uh, so we can send to, uh, after that, to an application, to a vi uh, video management system, a lot of analytics, and then that makes all this data make sense there in the video, uh, the forensic v video management system. So I, I find this concept of the hierarchy very interesting because I can imagine if you do an investigation that maybe you want to start off very broad. Maybe you start mm -hmm. off and say, I search for a uh, red passenger vehicle, and then if you find out you get hundreds of results, then you can drill down and say, okay, it's really yeah. that or something. Uh, yeah, and also. We were adding more analytics. So uh, we, we, in the, la the, the most recent uh, release that we had, we have uh, some vehicle accessories like uh, spare tires, hitch. Uh, so and uh, bike ride, we can add uh, eventually other analytics even that though. But uh, with all this information and with the neural networks that provide us uh, a probability, also confidence score, which is uh, so uh, this uh, information is used in the forensic search uh, system uh, by our customers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you, you call this the vehicle-centric investigation system, right? Yeah, yeah. At first, it was a plate-centric, really. Uh, it was only related to plate. So you're looking for a certain plate number. But uh, now that we can provide so many more data and that we're going in that uh, direction, and we will provide even more. With, uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, we, it's really much more now than uh, just a, a plate centric uh, system. It's really a vehicle centric system. So, yeah. and I feel like that this is also where the trend is going, and where really yeah. um, the um, like the different systems differ. Where 
some are really only doing um, LPR anymore, and then others are really thinking about the whole vehicle and all the information you can gather around it. Um, so one thing I want to, 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 to touch is, well, for all uh, neural networks, you need training data, you need mm -hmm. to collect data, and license plates are very, um, very personal information. It's really um, um, personal mm -hmm. identifiable information, of course, falls into a lot of data protection laws. So how do you balance this, that at the one hand, you need large amounts of data to train your networks, and on the other hand, how can you protect the privacy of the vehicles or the owners of the vehicles? Yeah, as I told you, our team is becoming also a data management team. So yeah, we have uh, to, we developed a lot of tools to capture the data, manage the data, store the data, visualize, visualize the data, but also protect the data. So uh, our clients first is transparent, uh, they, they share with us the data, we have to accept it, and they, it's not, uh, they, they, we have a, a very restrictive uh, access to the data, uh, only it's the, the data are anonymized, so uh, so we only keep the data that we really need to, uh, to retrain, to train our neural network, and, you know, as I told you, the, the clients are aware of the data that we are using, and they are aware of why we are using also this data. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, the, all these tools that uh, we developed, we have special. We now have uh, people working only on on these tools. So to uh, to get more, more data and to and to be very very careful about uh, the, the privacy and the safety of that data. So it can. It won't link, it won't link, even for the annotation. So we do it uh, internally. We have our own annotators that we hire. They are genetic employees. And uh, it's a cloud annotation tool. So they don't have, they never have any image on their own computers. So it, so it was quite an investment that we made, but I think uh, it worth uh, the investment. Yeah, I, I think um, you have this, uh, this, this product improvement program, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have, um, uh, yeah, maybe can you explain how does it work? Well, the, uh, the clients that want to share the data, so we explain them how you use it, why we want to use it. They can, they accept to share that, that data and that data is sent, a sampling of that data, not all their data, of course, sampling, anonymized. So it means that we put, uh, we don't have, we don't require all the information of the camera ID and the personal information of the client. We just need to know what that is from that state and uh, uh, we put noise in the location on uh, information time uh, information mm -hmm. so we just keep the information that we really need and then this uh, these images they go into a user uh, storage and uh, and, and this yeah. is really for, for customers who are opting in where you have a yeah they have to opt in yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not something for every customer but for the ones that want to contribute and that agree to on the terms and really know what's yeah, happening. Yeah, the sharp yeah for the sharp camera is mm -hmm. it's exactly like that. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so maybe um, w one final thing: where do you think all of this is going to in the future? I mean, we have been talking mm -hmm. about LPR being seen a little bit as a commodity, but not being a commodity, and then uh, growing really to more of, of a vehicle system or vehicle um, like um, gathering detection system. Where do you think this is going from here? So how is the technology evolving? How is the feature set evolving and so on? Well, in our case, of course, we'll provide more analytics. Uh, I think the clients are always happy to have more information, more data, reliable data. But we have to give them tools to manage that data, visualize the data, and have search engines that are easy to use, that are powerful. So we have to go into that direction too. So all the data science uh, trend that we're seeing, we have to take that train too. So we are, uh, we have to make, we make a, also, we put a lot of efforts in the, the tools to mm -hmm. manage that data again, to have searched, uh, search engines that are very easy to do and that can ingest all that information. And have also all the data science tools that we can give them like for, uh, health monitoring, uh, anomaly detection, uh, A-B testing, uh, all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. I, I think this is a very important point that's um, forgotten often. 
because we talk about analytics and we talk about detecting even more and, and more and more and even more accurate, but uh, it all doesn't help you if you, have, if you don't have the system around it to manage no, the data. Not at I mean, all. You know, we can't I just the clients, the yeah. customers and, uh, and expect them to somehow work with it. We really need to provide the full solution. Yeah, we have to do that because we can be overwhelmed with the data there just you can just think of four a query with four analytics with a timestamp and a location just write that query and you know it, it's a nightmare it's a, so it, you have to provide proper tools for that so you have to yeah. and and tools that are really specific for this use case it's just uh, very often not enough to just load this into power bi or tableau and mm -hmm. it just gets infinitely complex yeah our clients they have their own uh, our clients are very different and they have their own reality and we have to adapt to their reality. They don't have to adapt to our reality. Okay, well, super. This is super interesting. Um, thank you, Paul, for coming. I, I, I believe that, uh, that it was very interesting for our audience as well. If there are any questions, of course, you can reach out to Paul, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, on LinkedIn or you can write us in the chat here. Of course. So uh, thank you, Paul, again. Thank you for coming and giving us a little bit of an insight in license plate recognition. Thank you very uh, much for the invitation. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for everybody else, thank you for watching. We will have another one of these next month. We have a super exciting topic that's related to this, actually, already lined up. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.